everybody. <clears throat> it's Pearl. Um, I've been asked to make some seals and I thought I'd turn it into a video. Um, I'll be playing with um, molds as well today so you get to see how I use my molds and how quickly we can turn out um, pieces out of fondant using molds and um, and um, let's get started so you notice that I've actually rolled out some fondant um, with my guide strips I like to pref I like to play with volume so it allows me to create um, similar size pieces this way and also in proportion um, different teachers would teach you different things they you know they may tell you to weigh your pieces so that you can get the right sizes um, I like to play with volume I think that's a pretty good indication of what you know a, a piece is supposed to look like by volume um, okay I will go ahead and show you how with one piece I'm going to I'm going to make um I'm actually going to make two seals and um a head of the seal and so I've got myself a ring cutter it can be any cutter it can be any size any shape it doesn't really matter as long as you use the same cutter to get the right uh, to get the same quantity or the volume that you need for your piece so I'm just going to allow <sighs> and let's see how that how much that gives me so if i were to allow for the head of the seal to be this size i know that my seal's body would be at least um, three times three times the size of his head Okay, that looks like a pretty good proportion. Okay, so one for the head and about three for the body. Okay, um, that's a good way to go about And you know that by doing it this way, um, each and every one of your seals are going to be the same size. Um, so if I'm going to create two seals like this, then I know that if I just play it with four circles of... Um, fondant each time my seal is going to look the same so I am going to mix that together to make one seal I will go ahead and cut out another four if I can get four out of this I didn't place this very well mm, probably cutting a bit fine Just one two three Probably no. I'm going to, have to roll that one again, and I've conditioned my fondant already. So um, you see that I have conditioned it with a bit of Talos or um, CMC. CMC is a hardening or drying agent, so it allows your fondant to go from its soft. Um, texture to something that will actually hold up its shape when you're doing figurine work there's my seal cut and then that's the head I need to create separately so I'm making two seals one kind of lying down one kind of looking up and just the head so it looks like it's popping out of water okay whatever you don't use it back in its bag um, it just helps you know to keep your fondant um, still in a condition that you can actually use later on 
So here's my seals. Okay, so the trick to creating a smooth piece of uh, figurine is in how you condition your um, piece of fondant to begin with. Okay, so it's it's important for us to actually um, make sure that when we massage this and um, and 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 bring it all back together. Notice how when you're massaging, you're folding the f the, the fondant into itself, but. By doing that, you're also creating air pockets. So if you can imagine layers upon layers upon layers, and in between, there's all these air pockets. And really what you want to do is actually merge that all so it becomes one piece, right? So in order to do that, you have to squeeze and roll at the same time, squeeze and roll, just so that you can make sure it all comes together. And the warmth of your hands helps as well. Um, so if you are able to do that with your piece, and sometimes your pieces are too big and you need the table to help you, and you know, that's the best you're gonna be able to get. But there's other ways to hide, I suppose blemishes if you really have to turn them and make them the bottom for example um, you know choose the smooth bit at the top to be the top um, or the front or the one that's in view okay so a seal looks a bit like actually there's no description for it but it's small on one end big and around the other and then flat at the back for its tail so you know by rolling myself two-thirds up the way and rolling myself a small ball at the top and a bit of a fat bottom at the you know fat-ish uh, body at the bottom pinching right to make that a little bit more uh, flattened out at the bottom it don't look like much at the moment Okay, that will help you guide yourself into creating um, the side, the shape of a seal. Okay, and and some people might go, "Gosh, Pro, you make that look so easy," but it it really is just a matter of understanding your fondant, understanding your shapes, and and really just playing, playing it with it um, to get the shape that you need. But that's gonna be the side, the shape of my seal. Okay, so from the side you look at him and he's going to be looking like he's looking up, right? Um, Seal's head is a bit pointed, so that's what I'm going to do to his head. Okay, and notice I know I'm going to know where his nose is going to be and I think that's where I want his nose to be, which means then I'll go and create couple of eye sockets for his eyes and I know on the V again you know drawing a, an imaginary V will get you to a point where you're going to put his eyes right what about that imaginary line okay so you know his nose is going to there his eyes are going to go here okay and by creating that shape there I'm going to create where the nose is so his head's kind of coming down together pointed which is what you want to aim for okay and then make that nose be pronounced Okay. Let's 
so I'm gonna go ahead and put a dent there where his eyes are gonna be okay by doing this you're giving the seal um, an eye socket and also um, like where his cheeks are gonna be so it kind of start giving it'll give it a little bit of um uh, a bit of um character or uh you know feature i suppose in the seal so see how just by playing with where the nose is going to be to where i'm planning to put his eyes and creating that eye socket i've gone and given him a bit of a bridge where his no where you know the front of his face is gonna meet his nose. Um and I've given him a bit of a you know like a like a rounded cheek on the on the edge this way here. So it's amazing how just by a few simple steps um you will give it it a feature. Okay. So it starts looking more and more like the animal. Okay, so I know his eyes are going to be here. So I'll go ahead and create two dents. Okay, I play with sugar balls because I'm too lazy to make up black sugar um, rounds circles um sorry balls because uh, I, I find black like unless you're planning to play with um dark colors and dark colors only you'll find Okay, the back of a seal's body. Okay, I'm not gonna touch black at the moment because I'm playing, I'm, I'm gonna be making two more bits of the seal. So the back of his body, his tail's like a, a twin um, fin. So, you know, by cutting that in half and then just pinching, I'll create his back and just for the side of his um, his front I'm just gonna slice into the side of him I hope this is clear okay just like that I'm actually going to be pulling Okay, I'm following the line just that little bit. I'm going to be able to pull forward his arms. Okay. And notice that I'm actually rubbing underneath here because I'm trying to smooth that out so that when you actually bring forward the arms
So I need one kind of look like he's kind of gliding across and then one that is looking like he's coming up for air. And then just a head, so it looks like he's popping out of the water. But notice how just by doing that, you know, um, rounding off the, the, the edges that is, you, you're softening how the body looks um, and bringing it together, tucking in all the bits that you want blended into the body so sometimes fingers aren't enough because you can't get into somewhere quite so narrow so the tools do help in that sense um but yeah i guess it's a bit of um a bit of um common sense and also a little bit of um understanding of your limitations i suppose we all don't we don't all have um small enough hands or fingers to be able to get in there so using the tools to help so that's one of my seals that he's gonna be doing that now if i were to sit him strand a keg like that with nothing it's he's gonna he's gonna tip over okay so to help me help it stay um to 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 help it stay in position i'm going to need to put a skewer in him to help him hold up right and toothpicks toothpicks are great for that okay and really what i want to do is i want to be able to stand him in the styrofoam and so I'm actually going to have to put this in at an angle because I want him to, you know, um, to, to actually stay up. So this was going to help me make it stay up. By putting this in an angle, I know roughly that's the angle I'm going to have my seal at. Okay. So. Pre-hole. Okay. You always, always, um, create holes prior to actually um sitting the, the the actual structure in place only because you wanna you wanna be sure that this is where it's gonna end up okay so i know i want my piece to end up looking like this so i'm gonna go ahead and put it down the center here and make a line to the end of his head just about here um and by by twisting notice i'm twisting the skewer as I'm pushing it in. Now this is necessary because um, you often get, you know, um, you often get, you often get um, fondant sticking onto your um, toothpick or your skewer as you're pushing it through. And if you're not careful and and um, and actually push. Uh, um, it, Sorry, if you're not careful and you as you're pushing through, you could very easily cause this to go out of shape because it'll get stuck and it'll get pulled along. Okay, so here I am sitting it straight into its structure like this. Okay, I know I want my figuring to actually. I need him to look a little bit more downward. So. I will sit him straight into that and I've already done up that way but I didn't do all the way up because here's me ending and with the skewers um, and any you know support when you add when you put your fondant onto it each time you pull it out the hole gets bigger which means your skewer is not going to get stuck or it won't stay in place so really what you want to do is um, as you're twisting and pushing it through the best thing is not to not to leave it in there um but sometimes like this you know i can't be sure where i want to put um how how i'm actually going to finish him in terms of where how he's going to be positioned i do it this way and i just stop short that much so that when i actually do go to put him onto the structure that's going to help him hold it set himself up just the end bit the tip bits just going to get pushed into the remaining 
um, fondant at the top and hold okay so this way I know that my little seal look he's looked like he's diving straight out of water um, he's going to be able to stay in that position now and dry okay so um, oh, that's the head okay well I'll just show you quickly again how I did the head okay So, taking a bowl of fondant, if it's just a head, it's really a teardrop that you want. So, pick a good side. All right. And do that. All right, you get a little egg. Okay. Now, you're going to find this, it's where his nose is going to be. That's where his nose is going to be. Okay. And I'm going to find out, I'm going to know that his eyes are going to be here and I know his nose are going to be here. All right, that's the two, three points, okay? Now, his head's coming out of water, okay? So, I want to make sure that I have a little bit of his neck, okay, um, available. So, just by pinching on the end of where his head's gonna be and just rounding it between your fingers like this you're gonna create yourself a little head a oh, neck sorry okay okay with the, with the um with the head or with the front of the head where his nose is gonna be um notice animals they have that bit of um you know you see it in rabbits you see it in otters you see it in dogs but they've got that Clef, I suppose you could call it. <laughs> Nose. Okay. A bit of clef. And then just pushing. So you're actually pushing it up a little. Okay. So pushing up a little. And you will be able to kind of um, bring that. You know, you can, you can actually puff this piece out a little bit more by doing that. Okay. I'm going to have to go and do some research on the actual proper terms for these things because I can't keep calling it that thing and this thing. <laughs> Can I? Oh, I could, I suppose. Okay. Eye sockets. Okay. If, if you're worried about how it looks, start small, okay, before you use the bigger tool to make that bigger. Okay. But... It's all about, it's just to help you. It's to help you get started, okay? So that you know that after that, with your hands, you can actually shape this to look more seal-like. Okay. So, this is probably no, this not, not too dissimilar to, um, to like a rabbit. You know okay so there's my seal okay and I know his eyes are going to be here and here Forgot about the pan and it's set in water, so it's a little wet to touch. Just by dropping. Okay, it's it doesn't look finished yet because it doesn't have its nose. But because I know his nose is going to be black, I don't want to get my hands stained until I finish playing with all the bits of white I need to play with. Okay, so...
Once I'm happy and satisfied where his eyes are going to be, I go ahead and push them in so that they actually sit in well with the rest of the head. Okay, they don't look like much at the moment, but that's his head. And he'll be sticking out of water a little like that. Okay. So here's my fondant, the last bit of fondant that's been sitting there for a while. So you, you see it start to get a bit crazy around the edges. That's because I've conditioned the fondant before and um, and um, they and so whilst you know uh, whilst I've conditioned it so that it will firm up, this also means that it starts drying out really quite quickly as well. Um, if you don't work as quickly as I do, stick it back into the bag, you know, until you're ready to use it. Um, but here I am bringing it back together and see how the edges have all smoothed out again. Or just by massaging it, you know, you'll be able to bring it back to what it needs to be. So, massage. This is the part where you can make a smooth piece of fondant, okay? If you ever find it starts to stick to you, you know, a little bit of solid helps. So just by rubbing it between your hands, it's like a mo <laughs> it's like you're moisturizing your hands uh, at the same time, but you're allowing the piece to um, to work. You're allowing you know the piece to work between your hands without it coming off on you, okay? So. So here I am doing the next seal. And again, this is just a repeat of the first seal. Okay. I start with, you know, the small bit of his head at the top. Okay. And, and don't be don't be worried about making them identical because no two creatures are identical, not even humans. You know, and we might have doppelgangers out in that in the world, but they won't look identical, identical to you. So, um, by by just, you know, rolling in the middle of two-thirds, you notice that I've, start, I've created his neck, okay? And then pinching and working on the base of his body, down the back, where his tail is going to meet him. I've gone ahead and pinched and pulled. Pinch and pull, pinch and pull until I create that shape. Okay. Looks a bit like a bird from the back, doesn't it? Okay, look. Look at my seal. It's coming along. Okay, that's the shape that you want to create. Okay. And it's all about just then rolling that little bit more. Okay, creating that pointy look for her face. Okay. Nose. Right that cleft. Again, put push it in and push it up. Okay. By just doing that slight gesture, you pull the face um, or, or the, the, the front part of his mouth up. Okay. Okay. And then just that slight. Maneuver. Don't worry about where his nose is, what his um, nose cavity looks like because that can be straightened out. His eyes are going to be here and here. So eye socket. Okay. 
Okay. You want to take away excess water because um, excess water coming in contact with, say, sugar pearls um, that are coated in black will cause the color to run, okay? So water can be your friend, can also be your enemy. You just have to strike that right balance, okay? See how when I push it, you see that bead of water coming out there? If I don't, mark, if I don't take it away... It will, um, it will dissolve the black and then it will cause some bleeding issues, okay? So you want to make sure you don't have too much, of an ex too much excess water that, that you can cause the colors to run, okay? So paper towel is always handy to have on hand. The only thing I like to use a lot of is wet wipes because um, I like to clean my hands and I don't always have access to the to the sink all the time or I don't want to get up all the time to walk to the sink. So this seal is actually going to be looking upwards. So I want him to, you know, so here's the seal before that was looking down and this seal is actually going to come up behind him looking up okay so i want to be mindful of that when i'm creating his look so having the table helps as well you can make it look that way okay now let's work on his tail so again pushing down the back of him i'm going to cut down the middle and just by pulling it out and pinching okay I will create his tail okay Or some would say his feet. Okay. And now. Sometimes the easiest way is to just add two pieces to create his, you know, front legs, two legs. Um, but because I know the shape of how this um, seal is going to look, I'm going to go ahead and cut down two sides of him I'll actually bring that up that little bit more to the front of him okay and do the same on this side okay and then you need to round it off don't forget to round it off okay you want to still maintain that smooth seamless look but obviously not seamless now but um, you can help it by rounding off the edges okay so that you do have that smooth look to it okay and nothing better than using your hands but sometimes you just can't get in there yet okay so the tools help now he's coming out of water which means you know he's actually he's kind of diving straight up so his hands or his flippers at the front don't have to go very far away from his body either okay but just by slowly rounding the edges off 
inching and laying with the edge you soften that look and you create that okay you can narrow this out a bit more so you make his body look a little bit longer just like that I've got my seal coming out of the water and diving up upwards that is okay so rounding off his front two flippers or two I really need to know the proper name for these things um, note to self next time do a bit of do a little bit of research on what all the anatomy is made out of so that i can actually say it properly on video okay so here i am using my fingers to round off where i can reach into to round off okay so that you give it a smooth look but here's my so I have one that's diving and I need one that looks that's looking up. Okay, so that's what I've got. Okay. And that's what I've got. To help it stand up, I'm going to need my toothpick to look like it's going upwards, okay? This is a good way to measure as well because we don't want the top of the skewer to protrude his head. So by allowing yourself to adjust this, you know just about where it's going to be. Okay, where am I positioning him? I think he's going to be on that side of that guy so I need him to look upwards from there okay and like before I said you know um, you gotta you have to you should pre-hold your pieces so I know he's gonna want to be standing up like that which means I'll go from the center of him here and up to about near his eyes but not quite i'll probably take it up to his neck so that the rest of it can go in when i'm sitting him onto the styro okay so that gives me an idea of where it's going to be but notice how i twist twist and take it out okay just the same way and then i'm going to just sit him straight onto that skewer following the line of that skewer in its place Okay, so I've got one skip, one diving out of the water, one coming out of the water, like that. Okay, um, notice how I've created that head. Okay, before he's going to be coming out of water that way. Oh, he fell into a bit of water, he's a bit sticky now. So, light when you've got a bit of wet. And you want to take that wet away rubbing it out with um you know your hands or tissue isn't going to help so with solite because it's a little bit on an oily side as well um, it will allow you to play with your um, fondant and shaping it without um, causing the fondant to uh, crack on you uh, it will soften and and make it easier to glide over as well okay so okay so there's 
there's my three seals okay um i probably want to cut this off because i want his head to look up so by doing that i know that his head will come out of the water and it'll be straight up as well okay like that okay so you can use where's the toothpick i've lost it um there you are so i know that this piece here he's going to look straight out of the water so i'm going to push it all the way down straight and notice i don't want this to be any taller than my piece okay because the last thing you want is for that top of the skewer to come right off but just by making sure i have that it's not a very big way to go so all i need to do is just press it on down and look he's looking out of water these two are kind of diving out of water like that okay i'm gonna give them your nose forgot to mention in the beginning that i play with colored fondant okay and by that i mean that um i buy my color i buy the fondant ready colored it just saves me a lot of time to color up um, pieces and I find I like to blend colors to, to get the right shades. Um, I find them a lot quicker. So just creating myself, you know, um, three small balls of fondant. They don't have to be exact, um, but what you want is probably about a two or three mil diameter ball of fondant and you know because when you're rolling it between your fingers you know roughly just how big or how small they are okay so just very hopefully they're picking up my seal the very first seal um i've created my dent there but look the skews come away quite cleanly with the piece um and that's really really firm to touch already okay putting a bit of water on the edge i'm sorry in in the cavity the cavity always will allow so by doing a small um teardrop I've created um, like a, a, a key to a lock sort of scenario. So I'm able to actually sit this within the cavity and know that that's going to catch. Okay. So. Okay. Okay, so this one here, I had it going down. Okay. So I got to do that. Okay. Okay, 
Okay. Put them back. Oh, where's the hole? There. <laughs> okay. That's not going to come off with it. Okay, that's just to hold it in place. So that it will actually sit up. So and there you go. That's my three seals. Okay. I hope I've um, caught that for you. Just to show you how I play with moles. Um, with the same bit of fondant that I already conditioned previously. Um, if you were to stick this straight in here and it was nice and wet, it will stick to the mold. So to help it from stick from to stop it from sticking, um, some solite helps. So by just you know rubbing it in there, or you could rub it onto the fondant as well. But this kind of helps it, you know, um, pop up a little bit easier. Smooth piece of fondant goes in, comes out a smooth piece of um, fondant. So, pressing it into the mold, okay. You can put a little bit more than what I've got. But just to show you what it looks like, this is what I do. Pop it up. And there I've got my shell, okay. And don't worry about the glass, um, if you can see it. It will just um, get absorbed into the fondant when it's dry. And... Just by creating a few more pieces, I'll be able to create some um, shelves for these little guys. Thank you very much for tuning in. Um, I hope you learned something. I hope you watch this again and again. <laughs> um, and better yet, you know, take some fun out and have a play with me um, making some seals. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. See you next time. Bye.